Welcome to the 46th episode of the Friday Nightmares podcast. This episode, we will be talking about retail horror in honor of the sacred holiday of Black Friday, and that is Cyber Monday, uh, that both Canadians and Americans celebrate because I'm super tired of hearing Americans talk about Thanksgiving. Uh, hashtag <laughs> over it. Guys, just put up the fact that people like fucking Christmas trees up, okay? Like, no. you're all we're all coloni- colonizers anyway. Anyway, I refuse to accept the fact that there are Christmas trees. And up that's yet. for you, Luke Dickinson. You, Luke Dickinson knows what's going on. Lucas Dickinson knows what's going on. Anyway, <laughs> I am, as I said, one half of your hosting team, Heather Powell. I don't know if I already said this already, but coming to you from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada, and with me, as always, is my American counterpart. Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Sports Creek, in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy, fully vaxxed, waxed, and ready to climax, and if you can, please get me wet, feed me after midnight, and please give me all that stuffing up my bum bum. (laughs) That's what Scott looks forward to on Thanksgiving. (laughs) (laughs) really good scott um no scott knows this i think tomorrow will be our official two years that scott and i started talking and yeah so i talked to scott because scott's such a polite dude that he would never like approach anyone let alone a random female right yes and i i didn't realize so thanks to Lacey lou because i think my opener to him was like Hey, you write for pop horror. Do you know Lacey? But I think yes. I called her Lucy. <laughs> yep, yep, you did. <laughs> right? Which is ironic because on our latest Slumber Party Massacre intro, our guest intro person called her Lucy. Did they really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, she hates it so much. Yeah, apparently. I'm going to tell her that I called her Lucy and she'll hate me more than she already does at times for my taste and disagreements <laughs> with her. Um, but yeah, I can't believe y- y'all. <laughs> y'all. <laughs> y'all. <laughs> I can't believe that it's been two years, Scotty. And we we befriended each other over uh, over a conflict. So Scott and I became friends over a Facebook conflict. I felt bad for Scott. Um, Yeah, because I got somehow sucked into the drama that escalated out of nowhere, which I won't get into because don't want to open up old wounds. Well, and it's two years ago. I can barely remember what happened anyway. You probably do better than I do. I don't even remember it. I just remember Nudie being a cranky bear. That's all I remember. (laughs) Like, that's really what it comes down to. So, but yeah. Anyway, cheers Um, to us. Yeah, Um, happy two years of being awesome right and honestly we started the conversation about running a podcast together around the time i came out to visit you and that anniversary is coming up it wasn't long after we connected that i made the decision to go visit scott that's back when you could travel without a covid test Scott. You're right and and what is that three like three covid 19 times though I miss those days the exciting thing is for all my canadian friends and listeners that are out there you can now travel to the united states for under 72 hours and come back without having to get a COVID test to yeah. re- Canada. So um, this has opened up the doors for me to visit Scott as well as Brandon Orlick. I'm planning on visiting both of those two in the new year. Um, it's been too long. Well, Scott's easier. He's a drive. Oh, and I, hell yeah, I'm I easier. could drive to see Brandon. <laughs> well, yeah, that too, right? Um, yeah. I, could, I could drive to see Brandon, but it's like a seven, eight hour drive. Like if you and I were doing it together, that would probably be one thing. Like if right. I, but even for you, it's not close because you would have no, it's to. like 12 hours. <laughs> like it's way further for you than it is for me. So I'll probably just fly out of Toronto to Newark um, and hope that he picks me up from the airport. <laughs> right. Who knows? He may Brandon. just leave you stranded at the airport. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, the plan loosely is to go out there for Monster Mania um, in Man, throw, March. Throwing these terms around like easy and loose, man, you're just getting me all riled up over here. <laughs> I know, right? And then for Scotty, like it's a three, four hour drive. So for Scott and I to see each other, it's not nearly as, well, it's, it's special, but it's not as big of a struggle. You know, you have to get into a car and drive. It's, you know, it's a drive, but it's not the same thing as having to book flights and yeah, you can leave in the more. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, Yeah. So yeah, you can leave in the morning and get to one or either of our houses by like noon. If you left at like eight in the morning. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not that big of a, of a deal. So 
Um, but yeah, I'm just happy because really like I took for granted how easy it was to cross the border. You know, even Dave C, like if I wanted to meet up and have chicken wings with Dave C, I, I wasn't able to, now I could. So Dave, I'm coming to see you for some fucking chicken wings. So yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if Dave likes chicken wings. Dave, I hope you like chicken wings or uh, fuck. I'll, we'll go to the strip club, Dave, wherever you want to go, Dave, we'll go. I don't give a shit. I don't, I'm sure better. Buffalo strip clubs are the, the finest quality and all everyone's vaccinated so that's all i care about right now i was gonna say and dave you know just if you're gonna if you're gonna meet up with heather at least get a picture with you her and junior that'd be amazing oh, I, and send like, it to me i'm actually like hoping to get a selfie with junior and put it on <laughs> Pornhub. that's what i'm hoping to do um <laughs> dave i see a patreon exclusive coming your way coming <laughs> get it, Dave. um but yeah so i it will be exciting i can actually go over and see him which will be cool you can come up and see him um, which will be nice. You know, yeah. it's just nice to have that flexibility, even if it's for a couple of days. Unfortunately, for some of my friends that live a little bit further, I won't be able to go see them. Um, people that live in the southern states and stuff, it's a, th- a three day turnaround is just too much yeah. um, to do that kind of a distance, but um, definitely local. And that's what it's supposed to be for, right? Like if you're crossing the border for a couple of days or seeing some family and friends um, on the other side of the just on the other side of the border it shouldn't yep. you shouldn't have to get a covid test right so right and it's right around the holiday holidays so well yeah for black friday shopping because let me tell you fucking canadians love going over and spending their hard-earned bird money on american <laughs> goods and bringing it back uh so that's also why we did retail horror because we were like well black friday is coming up and like that's scary it's it, a scary yes, it fucking is. holiday so what's better for horror than that but i guess like um, Sorry, go well, ahead. So I'll say, speaking of uh, Black Friday, might as well just say it right now. You know, for everyone that does do Black Friday shopping, I'm sure most of the people that are listening are not the people this is aimed towards, but respect the workers that are doing retail work on Black Friday. Those poor people are putting up with a lot. Now they're putting up with a lot all the time, but not not even counting Black Friday, which is our which is freaking insane. And there are just too many assholes out there. So yeah. My like, I feel like advice. you know that that's me. I just go over and tell people that I'm entitled to whatever yeah, you're, I you're, want. Uh, you're I'm Karen, a Karen, Heather. You're a Karen, I Heather. am. I totally like totally. run into, you know, it's funny. I just went this afternoon to the weed shop. So weed is legal in Canada, all over Canada. So we have distributors that you just walk in and buy it like you're buying a pack of cigarettes. Um, so it's, it's all, they sell all pre-made rolled joints, stuff like that. So I was picking up some joints and there was this young lady working and I came in and I'm like, oh, you guys busy today? She's like, I guess. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> like trying to be funny and like, like, cause it's a pretty like s- specific clientele that goes in there. There's only so right. many people out at the time. They get everything for you. They walk you in, they walk you out. Like it's a very, structured classy experience so I always find it weird when you don't like people not that I think you know they should roll out the red carpet for me or anything but when you're trying to just make casual conversation but I guess you never know what that person's experienced that day right right like I'll say because people people are rude I mean we've experienced it everywhere it's true not here though when you came to Canada everyone was well besides the six anti-masker protests oh yeah <laughs> that was the funniest thing i don't think we ever talked about that have we have no show? we never did actually that but that was freaking <laughs> hilarious so anyway i've said to scott like obviously we have people that are anti-mask and anti-vax in canada by no stance am i going to sit here and say we're not it's just i haven't seen it i haven't seen any protests I haven't seen anyone get into like a kerfuffle at a store because they had to put on a mask. I, I haven't seen any of that shit. So we got here out of Niagara Falls. And this was just before the recent bill was passed that you had to be vaccinated to go to restaurants, yeah, like, sporting events. Like, like I right think it was before. the weekend before, right? Yeah. And <laughs> we're coming out of the wax museum and these six people like two signs and they're like so this is some guy that's going into the wax i wish it had been scott and i like i wish this dude had <laughs> said it to me but he didn't i wasn't there in time and he was like how do you feel just being a sheep and putting a mask on because i would have turned around and be like bah, i'm gonna enjoy the <laughs> wax museum <laughs> i'd be like and i'd be like i'm american so i'm gonna enjoy my freedom which <laughs> right? been like Oh man, maybe those two people will join our protests. They're super weird. And there was literally <laughs> six of them. That was it. There was these six it was, people. It was the most pathetic protest I'd ever seen. Protest. They walking down Clifton Hill and we're like, what losers, right? Like everyone was laughing at them. It was it was really funny. 
Um, oh, that was you great. Know, and I'm sure they upset some people, right? Because no one likes to see that. But I think people, like, it's your right to protest. Sure, knock your socks off. But do you honestly think your little six person protest, anyone's looking at being like, oh man, these guys, they fucking get it. Like, they- <laughs> especially the fact that it's a touristy area. So it's going to be from like a lot of Americans who are coming from a country that, you know, where masks are, you know, not uh, really a thing anymore. But the ones that are coming over are fully vaccinated yeah. and already know that they got to wear a mask when they go into stores. So you protesting to American tourists who are already expecting to wear a mask and not throw a fit, you're not doing anything. Well, or even <laughs> internationals, like we're letting international people into the country if they've been vaccinated. So like literally, you're right. If there's any tourists there, they're vaccinated. And now like I've been at restaurants, I've been at movie theaters and they have been packed like oh i bet packed i went out devil's night to the to absence we talked about that a couple episodes ago packed and like all these people that were like i'll take my business elsewhere all right enjoy sitting at home while the rest of us go out and have a good fucking time <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> enjoy ordering online and just being a homebody Who are you? and that's fine like if that's your that's your prerogative and that's how you feel that's absolutely fine. But there's rules and regulations. I can't get in my car and drive drunk. I have to have a license. I have to follow rules of the road. I have to follow lots of different things. I have to be 19 years old to buy marijuana. You know, they have to escort me in and escort me out. I'm not like, well, that's my right to buy weed. And I should just be able to grab whatever package I want from the shelf. Where's my freedom at? What the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, I don't walk into the LCBO, which is our liquor store, and be like, what do you mean I need to wear a shirt and I can't have my boobies hanging out? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what do you mean I need to wear shoes and I can't run around like it's the fucking Flintstones? Like, I just don't get where, like, you have choices. You make choices every day. Yep. And and that's okay if this is the choice you've made. It's not forever. This policy is only in mandate till March 2022 um, for restaurants and stuff up here. And it's just to make sure cases stay under control over the winter months. Like it's it's very common sense, but I don't know. We all make choices and you got to live with them. And I just feel people have a hard time with accountability and just yeah, accepting say, that they make choices, you know? Right. I was going to say, yeah, that's the thing. You know, we make choices. We got to live with them. And we're the ones that are okay with it because we're the ones that are making the correct choices in our eyes where these guys are just like, yeah, we're not going to do it. Oh, well, this is bullshit. Why can't I go here? Well, maybe there's cause and co- consequence hmm. or cause and causation. Hmm. It's just like, but it's like that for everything. You know, I got a, I got a sticker in the mail. So I got a letter from the Ontario government. I didn't renew my license sticker in April, 2021, because we were in our second lockdown or third lockdown. I can't remember now, third lockdown and everything was closed. So I was like, oh, fuck that shit. I'm not renewing my sticker. So I got a letter that was like, anyone whose birthday is in April who hasn't renewed their sticker yet needs to do so this month. So you know what I did, Scott? We did my fucking sticker. No, because- you grabbed you grabbed you grabbed a bald eagle and just started screaming. I, I'm going to be an American. Uh, a Canadian oh, goose. I grabbed a Canadian but, goose. But you know you're inspired by our freedom. I wave, am. Waving. I am. I am very much so. You know, I paid for my fucking sticker. Do I like it? Of course not. Do I like paying my property taxes? Of course not. But this is just life. And this is what happens when you live in a civilized, organized society. Yeah. And I just, I always find it so funny when people just, I don't know, like you have the choice not to go do these things and that's okay. Um, but you know what? You do you. I'm I'm so excited that at least now I can cross the border for 72 hours. I can go see Dave C. We can go to Honey's and Buffalo for chicken wings. Um, he can go over the cover test with me. We can talk about Halloween kills and junior um and like probably uh, i can't smoke a fatty because i got to come back over but if we if i ever can stay for a longer period of time dave and i can smoke some fatties together i think that would be a lot of fun getting high with fuck dave yeah, would. <laughs> fuck yeah i feel would. like dave C would be the best partier dave i can't wait to fucking party it up with you we're gonna have a great time. it would be a blast for those of you who don't know who dave c is because we're bringing him up like he's our boyfriend he um, is. he and Brandon Orlick and also Christian Luciani are part of the Exploding Heads movie podcast. If you're not a fan, we recommend checking them out on Patreon. They are very, very funny motherfuckers. So please check them out. Yes. Um, but yeah, horror wise, I feel like things are slowing down. The horror choo-choo train is coming to a close. I'm finding, I don't know about you, but 
Yeah, well, I have a lot I still need to watch. I just got distracted with wrestling. That's not all you got distracted with, Scott. No, no. Uh huh. Wrestling dis- is not what you've been distracted with. Let's <laughs> stop lying to the people. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, I'm, you know, also dating Mandy still. So, yes, my yes. Distractions so- there. And I was so dog sitting. Scott won't call her this, but I call her his girlfriend. And I told my dog that she was his girlfriend. <laughs> and so I sent this funny video to Scott to be like, well, I've decided you're together, right? Because in my head, it just makes sense for me. Whether they are or not doesn't matter. In my head, it's just easier for me to explain to my friends. So <laughs> I take this video of me telling my dog, I should post it to our page if Scott ever gives me permission to. It's really funny. <laughs> and I tell my dog that, you know, Scott and Mandy are official or whatever. And he looks up and then he sticks his head back in his bed and goes back to sleep. And it's the funniest shit ever. If Scott is ever okay with me sharing that one day, it is pretty funny. Um, it, it cracked me up. It was funny. It was a good lose. But you have been spending a lot of time with Mandy, who is also a horror fan. Mm-hmm. Um, and you guys have been watching Game of Thrones. Yes. Right. Have you guys been acting it out while you watch it? <laughs> no, no, that might get a little uh, dangerous. <laughs> you certainly pull out swords and you guys have like a duel in her apartment and shit. <laughs> yeah, and then just lots, lot, yeah, just lots of violence. That would not be good. Have you told her you almost went pro for magic yet? Have you broke it to her? That she's dating a celebrity? <laughs> You know, honestly, I don't remember if I have. I want to bring that up. Not only do you have this world famous podcast, you are also a former almost pro magic player. Like she's hit the jackpot. She should be putting a fucking <laughs> ring on your finger. That's how this should be going on. Yeah. Like she should buy you the best wizard staff she can find. <laughs> well, <laughs> That's for your hand in marriage. <laughs> Oh, that's kind of funny you bring that up, but uh, like, no, I, I was showing her the, all the photoshops that people have done of me, like, and of you and I, but like, you know, because I'm mainly the target of a lot of the oh, photoshops. Oh, a lot, yes, mostly. And, <laughs> and as you can see, Mickey agrees. Yes. And uh, <laughs> I was showing her all those, and then she's just like, wow, I'm dating a celebrity. <laughs> Sorry, I had to mute myself there. That was funny, Scott. I was laughing. <laughs> Mickey is still barking. Um, and absolutely, you are a celebrity, though. That's the thing. You absolutely are one. Like we joke, but everyone knows who you are. You're extremely popular. I'll say both of us are. Um, yeah, but you have this more appeal to you, and I think it's because I bully you, and you're the underdog. Which you're welcome, <laughs> by the Thank way. Thank you. Thank you. Um. So yes, yeah, so we're very happy that Scott has been seen. In my head, he's already married with five kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh good lord i'm just hoping there's gonna be a bachelor party scott you know what i'm looking i'm saying i was looking up the cost of having strippers come to your home that's another story for another day um <laughs> but, good lord but yeah like as you can tell the horror the horror stuff has kind of like slowed down to a slow little dribble um that's okay you know there could be some some major hitters that still come out in december I still have to see Last Night in Soho, which everyone's yes. praising. Uh, so I'm sure it's good. Yep, that and one that's on your list, I still really want to see, and it's not in theaters near me. Oh, the Antlers? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll talk about that. But I guess we'll get into our 2021s because yeah. we've kind of already downplayed. We're like, oh, yeah, we'll talk about the garbage. <laughs> we yeah, well, I was just saying, uh, so much. you know, where it was, I carried the show on my shoulders last week with all my 2021 watches. It is now back to you. Oh, yeah, I've because got... you're too busy watching wrestling, right? Right. Well, I was. I've been watching AEW pay-per-views. Now, and those are like four, four and a half hour long shows. So, Do you mean wrestling or do you mean other kind of wrestling? <laughs> I mean wrestling. It's my ass. Oh, man, I would mean the other kind. <laughs> But anyway, I, mean, I, I wrestle with myself, but that, you know, that's another story. <laughs> You're like, oh, where'd that hand come from? Uh, it's turning sleeper. heel. It's turning <laughs> heel. <laughs> You're trying to put like the sleeper on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Anyway, <laughs> the first movie we're going to talk about today is Spore. Um, oh, I added the wrong one on here. I, it's not a good film. <laughs> it's yeah. Not a good movie. I watched it because I, I thought. That, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, other people are watching it. Maybe it will be good. It was just really, really kind of like low budget. Um, The lives of 10 strangers intersects through a terrifying chain of events as a mutating fungus becomes to spread through a small town and wiping out everyone it comes into contact with. I will give the movie credit for its concept. I think a mutating fungus is is cool. Um, I think that's something that you don't necessarily see all the time. 
I guess. I don't know. We've seen a lot of mutating shit. I was like, lately, lately with like the fungi thing. Uh, I feel like with the pandemic, everything's spreading and then it's like everybody's dead. Well, pre- be prepared because, you know, art imitates life. And so we'll be seeing a lot of this stuff for a while. Oh, you saw this movie too. The store. Yeah. Oh, what did yeah, you think? I, I thought it was okay. I really liked the practical effects. Mm. Um but yeah they were good they were good yeah but it ended up kind of being an anthology kind of not because it was just telling 10 different stories yeah but it really never gave you a focused character in any of the stories really to like root for it just kind of threw you in the middle their story ended then it's just like oh who, what what am i rooting for here there yeah, really wasn't much of a story build up i agree you didn't get the point yeah right it was more just like, in a, like what's the point of all this yeah, it's like you were thrown into just like a quick glimpse of an event someone went through without really much go to go off of. right it was like a friday night for me um, <laughs> yeah pretty much you jump in the middle of heather already halfway drunk yeah you're, high, not gonna, you're not gonna have the context no you're not you're gonna just get that you know me talking nonsense about something oh makes... yeah oh yeah <laughs> that's true oh man it's been a long time since i've had a booyah it has um, been i'm kind of i'm, I'm worried are you okay no i'm trying to finish grad school <laughs> <laughs> that's why um no those protesters just got to me scott i'm really yeah, fighting I had a for feeling. freedoms on the weekend that's what i like to do with my spare time um <laughs> so this is like a, a a poor man's anthology i don't know i don't really want to recommend it i i don't think it's that great even for no. the budget but it is available I... on itunes google play amazon video flick filling and uh youtube if anyone is interested flick bean flick the bean yeah yeah no that's a different that's a different movie <laughs> that's, oh that's like the that's like the porn porn tub or porn tube i would you, i porn. would definitely yeah. give a review of that one i would definitely <laughs> hey you know what probably was better than this so the next one is uh, the beta test uh this is a 93 minute runtime it is directed by jim cummings he also stars in it and it's funny, like it's real funny, but it ha- you have to like Jim Cummings humor. If you don't yeah. enjoy Jim Cummings humor, you're not going to like this. So if you liked The Wolf of Snow Hollow, you'll like this movie. If you didn't like The Wolf of Snow Hollow, skip over this because you're probably not going to enjoy it. That's my advice to you. Yeah, I'll say like, this is one of those like sexual erotic or not even erotic, sexual thrillers type stories. And yeah, it's just. Like, really for example, well entertaining. Tim Davis, who's the heel of our podcast because he refuses to have me on um, oh, wrestling Tim. for dummies. Because you know what friends do? Friends organize a time to come on each other's podcast. Ooh, ooh, That's damn, what they do. I drop boy. the mic. Tim comes out. Da, 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 da. <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> right it'd be great i'd love to, i would love to do promo shit with horror for dummies and we just shoot promos <laughs> on each other i would i would love that um he gave it two and a half stars this just shows you like if you want a completely different list of horror movies listen to horror for dummies like if you think the opposite of scott and i you will love the horror for dummies podcast <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> true like very rarely do we all agree on the same thing very rarely um Scott has his bad boy at four stars. I have it at five. Um, wow. Yeah, I liked it that much. I just love the humor here. It basically, it's about people being solicited for a one night stand sexual encounter, no identities, um, no further contact, one time sex. And besides hoping that will happen to me, because um, <laughs> I would go um for sure no problem would you go uh if i knew like if everyone that was going to it was clean yes oh that's, <laughs> that's a much more mature approach to take Scott. <laughs> like if it said you have to be clean to do this then yeah absolutely okay all right well <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> well yeah yeah <laughs> i didn't think of that good point scott so <laughs> anyway this movie kind of goes on of what if you did this and what would the consequences be and you can imagine it follows a couple of other people briefly that do this and the outcomes of it. And it's just awesome black humor, like black comedy, black humor, whatever you want to call it, dark humor. Um, it's just really, really, really funny. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, it sounds like your jam. You can find it on iTunes, Vudu, Google Play, Microsoft Store, and DirecTV. And it is called The Beta Test. Yep. This is definitely a high recommend. I, I had a lot of fun with it. Like- now, I realize I just assumed you didn't watch any of these. Have you watched this one? Nope, the rest are all yours till the very oh, last one. Shit, sorry. No, that's all right. Oh well. Like I said, you're carrying the show this time. Well, it's because you're too like busy always. watching Games of Thrones and not wrestling. 
Um, so school's out forever. This is a 105 minute runtime. Brandon Orlick from the Exploding Heads podcast recommended this to me. And Brandon never steers me wrong with, with recommendations. I don't say enough nice things about Brandon. I always make fun of him. But he has really good taste in films. And yeah, he is like me. Yeah, absolutely. And he has never yet steered me wrong with a, with a movie. He really knows his stuff. Um, so anyway... I really like this film. It's basically another take on a zombie outbreak with the zombies not being the main focus. Hmm. Um, More of a survival within a private school and other issues that come with a zombie outbreak and the focus of that. So I think this is a hidden gem of 2021. I think a lot of people will skip over it and not watch it because it's not being talked about. Like, and really, let's be real here, unless you're some of the top 20 to 30 horror movies you're not talked about. And yes, you do miss out on gems if that's all you do. Yeah. So I strongly, strongly recommend this one. Uh, it's a really good take, as I said, on the zombie drama without a lot of zombies. Tim Davis actually gave us three and a half stars. Thank you, Tim. Wow. You're actually earning respect in my book. You're redeeming again. yourself, my friend. Maybe we can take Tim at SummerSlam. I'll um, take Tim him, all right. <laughs> So give give him a good old Scott Crawford if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and listen to Horror for Dummies on the Padded Room Podcast Network for more information on what a Scott Crawford is. <laughs> so we have this movie is available on Google Play, Voodoo, Hoopla, and YouTube. It is worth whatever rental cost you pay for it. Same with the beta test. I strongly recommend checking this one out. That includes you too, Dave C. Before the end of the year. Mm-hmm. All right. Next one motherly <laughs> this is a probably one of the more predictable horror films i've watched recently it is about a, a young lady and her mother that live alone in an isolated farmhouse and things are not as they seem and there is somebody out to get them mm-hmm. you you learn pretty quickly once they're you learn the reason why they're at the farmhouse why someone's out to get them and you can kind of put together with your big brain, why it is. Not a bad acted movie. The little girl does a very good job. Even Scott's showing me how big his brain is with his hands. It's huge. It's huge. Um, massive, massive brain he has. So it's it's fine. Honestly, like I I didn't hate watching it. It was good to throw on while I was doing some work, but I didn't think it was anything overly special. It doesn't have a runtime here. I'm going to put it at, I think it was an hour and 17 minutes. So it has a 3.0 rating on Letterboxd, probably because not a lot of people have watched it yet. It is available on iTunes, Voodoo, Spectrum On Demand, DirecTV, and Microsoft Store. I would say no more than a $199, $299 rental or just skip over it. I don't think it's going to be something that's really going to do it in for anybody. Um, And the next one is the movie we kind of talked about earlier, the theater watch that unfortunately Scotty could not get to. Yeah. Sadly. Yeah. Antlers. So Antlers is a 99 minute runtime. Uh, Carrie Russell's in this. And, you know, every time I see her, I think Felicity. So I'm really glad when I see her in other roles that don't have to do with Felicity because it <laughs> kind of helps see me or see her as something else. Uh, the rest of them, oh, and Graham Greene, you know, they're a famous Indigenous actor from Canada, um, is in it as well. But those are probably oh, nice. the most recon- recognizable people. The kids in here are great. I think, you know, honestly, the the review that Tim Davis and Daniel did on the Horror for Dummy, I swear to God, this is just an Exploding Heads and Horror <laughs> for Dummy fucking promo podcast today. Well, um, I mean, Horror for Dummies are our boyfriends. That's true, right? Um, they did a great review on it and... I think that Tim's very right on with there was a scene that probably should have brought tears to my eyes and it didn't, uh, which is fine. Like, I didn't think it was a bad movie. I thought the legend that they were speaking about was very good. The special effects were very good. It really ramps up at the end. There's lots of action and it goes really, really quick. Do I think it's like the best movie in the entire planet? No. Um, Did I think it was like crappy and shitty? No. Um, I think it was just okay. I have a feeling. I'm going to be Daniel on this one and you're going to be Tim on this one. Like when I finally do yeah, see it. Maybe. Because this is like a movie I'm dying to see. Like so uh, excited to see. Yeah, I was really excited to see it too, Scott. Yeah, so I'm, 
I have, a, I just have this gut feeling that, yeah, I'll be Daniel in this and you'll be Tim. I don't think you will. <laughs> I know you pretty well. I think you'll be around the same as me. Like, oh, I okay. think you'll enjoy it. Like, don't give me, I enjoyed it. I had a good time with it. Like, I thought it was fun. I, I thought some parts were really suspenseful. I love the myth in it. It just didn't make me feel the emotions I was supposed to feel. Gotcha. Right. So that's where I do agree with Tim. Um, and Tim and I are going to unite at full gear. And now, we're going are you going to be, are you going to be the face or the heels? I don't know. We're going to do a heel turn probably. Good. Good. Or Tim does a heel turn and I do a face turn. Cause I feel like I'm the heel in that relationship. I feel like I would always be the heel. <laughs> At least, especially in our relationship. Oh yeah. But I, I love being the heel. Cause I'm such like an actual softy, nice person that. Right. <laughs> pretending to be like someone who doesn't care about anyone is fun. You know? <laughs> that is true. Right. So anyway, antlers is available in the movie theaters up here in Canada. It's available at Cineplex. Uh, it's not available anyone else. It's, it's kind of hard to find, to be honest with you at the theaters right now, it's slowing down where it's offered. Scott missed it at his theater. So if you can t- catch it in the theaters, I do say it's a good watch. Like I don't regret going to see it. I would re- enjoy it as a theater watch. Um, just wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be, but maybe I had too high of expectations. That could have been an issue too. That could be. Yeah. Right. Um, and finally the last one that I, I will talk. Uh, oh, then you talk. I'll let you talk about the last two. Cause you've seen them, right? Just the last one I've seen. Oh shit. Okay. So <laughs> the last two I'm going to talk about is human animals. And uh, I think the Spanish pronunciation is Emil's humos, hum- humanos. Venom's like, fuck you, Heather. That's not how you say it. <laughs> um, Venom is from No More Room in Hell, Fresh, Fresh Cuts, and is an excellent podcaster who has Spanish heritage, who will be very mad at my mispronunciation of those words. <laughs> but it's a pretty good film. It's available on Prime. It's an 88 minute runtime. I'll just go by its English name, which is Human Animals. If you saw last year's Prey, I'm pretty sure this is the same German Shepherd. Um, Right? And he's much, this is a much better movie he's in. Basically what happens is these people are living in a high-end neighborhood and someone gets bit, a little girl gets bit by the German Shepherd and chaos and the relationships fall apart because of it. Very gory, some excellent gore in this movie. Uh, The ending is a little cheese, cheese, but dark at the same time. Uh, It's available on Prime. And if you like home invasion, stalking, neighborhood gone wrong, relationships gone wrong movies, this is definitely a mess must watch. I love Spanish films because they don't necessarily shy away from really sad endings and they don't give a shit. Um, I still think of how I watched The Occupant last year and that ending, what a fucking downer. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. Um, They don't shy away from the hard stuff. So if you wanted to watch this, it is available on Prime. If you don't have Prime, it is available on DirecTV and Pantena. Pantena? 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 I don't know. I guess it's a huh. new, just, just new channel in the States. Have you heard Maybe. of it? Maybe. No. Anyway. So I would say Prime, though. Most people have Prime. If you have Prime, I definitely recommend checking it out. And finally, the last 2021 movie we are going to talk about this evening is Night Teeth. Uh, this movie is available on Netflix. And I don't know where Netflix picked this one up from, uh, but it for not being an international film, it's pretty fucking good. It's a really entertaining vampire film that I really, really enjoyed. It's nothing, it's not doing anything really new with the vampire genre. You're not going to watch this and be like, oh man, what a new and interesting deep concept on vampires. Uh, and that, you know it's vampires, by the way, within the first 30 seconds. They tell you. So I'm not giving spoilers okay. away. They're like, we're vampires and we live in L.A. Like, that's <laughs> the opening statement. So you know what the dealio is. Um, but you don't know what the what the characters' relationships are. And I think it's honestly the actors, particularly the main lead, um, George Lenbon Jr., who plays Denny, Deb Ryan, who plays Blair, and Lucy Fry, who plays Zoe, that steal the show. Uh, they are excellent. Uh, Deb Ryan's been in some other stuff before. Horse Girl, Life of the Party, um, a couple other kind of lower budget films. And Lucy Fry has been in The Vampire Academy, The Darkness, Bright, a couple other bigger films. Bright had Will Smith in it. So, you know, she's definitely kind of cutting your teeth in the acting field. And she's great. Like, the girls are beautiful. The main guy is actually very attractive, too. He's a good-looking young man. I hope to see more from him. I really enjoyed him. He was in the Spider-Man movies. Uh, Spider-Man uh, Homecoming was one of the last movies he was in that was probably oh, nice. really big. So really liked him. Thought he was great. 
I recommend checking out Night Teeth on Netflix for a free watch on Netflix at a, let's see here, a 107 minute runtime. You can't go wrong. And now Scotty, you were able to get through this one and I couldn't get through the first 10 minutes. So it'll be interesting to hear your thoughts. Yeah, so this one uh, was recommended by our good friend, Xander Kane. Uh, He said this may be in his top 10 by the end of the year. He really dug it that much. So I figured I'd give it a watch. And that is Broadcast Signal Intrusion. Uh, In the late 90s, a video archivist unearths a series of sinister pirate broadcasts and becomes obsessed with uncovering the dark conspiracy behind them. I found this just like extremely intriguing uh, from the very beginning because, yeah, he's just kind of like, you know, just going through listening to things and all of a sudden like he sees a video of a masked person like wearing this creepy ass like mask and like it's all distorted so you can't hear what it's saying and then it cuts out and goes away and there was only like three tapes like throughout like the 80s and 90s that uh there are three broadcasts that this happened and it was like hinting at something dark that has happened like a murder because every time these one of these things happened a woman nearby like where these uh broadcasts were coming from got murdered Mm. and so it just becomes like this investigative like investigative mystery with horror elements and like holy shit i just thought the acting in this was really good the story i found like super intriguing and like when it hits that ending it was it gets pretty freaking dark like i'm glad i watched this one this one i definitely recommend to a lot of people because uh, like you know like Heather said she wasn't able to get through it but at the same time like I still recommend it give it a shot because it is kind of a uh, different type of slow burn style horror right and I could have just been not in the mood for it that day too right so right that could and, be a possibility as well but yeah I, uh, to give everybody an idea I gave this a four out of five or eight out of ten and so did Xander and uh and Sanders yeah, like, is the only opinion we really value here exactly mine yes. mine doesn't matter it's just Sanders <laughs> Sander watches a lot of movies so yes. if he thought it was good it probably yet again Sander came from the Cemetery Gates podcast uh which you can find on SoundCloud is excellent at picking good movies so yes he um, is yeah um and this movie is available on Amazon iTunes Google Play Vudu and Amazon Video nice uh but yeah definitely recommend it like especially if it's like $3.99 rental $4.99 rental I'd, re- I'd recommend it Yeah, I love it. I love the list that we brought that, you know, even as we're winding down to the end of the year, there's some movies that we talked about tonight that you really do, you know, especially if they're free on Netflix or Prime, why wouldn't you? Right. You know, like you've got nothing to lose and you're paying for the service anyway. Uh, So please get a chance, check those out. Um, Both Scott and I had watched the Great White one that came out on Shudder and we talked about that one a while ago. Uh, Yeah. That was a thing. (laughs) That was the thing. We we talked about that. So if you want to hear our, our you know, I'm, I'm surprised Shudder picked it up, to be honest with you. I didn't think yeah, it was good I, enough for Shudder, but hey. Maybe Shudder yeah. was like, you know, we need a new movie because we don't have any shark ones. So let's get a new shark movie. Maybe they were like, hey, sharky movies. And then they were like, baby shark. Da, 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 baby <laughs> shark. <laughs> anyway, so for older films, I just put here the house, the house is October built too. 2017 i really am a big fan of the original i actually didn't think the second was as bad as everyone made it out to be i like no. don't get me wrong i didn't think it was great but i didn't think it was horrible it was okay yeah i'll say i, I enjoyed it um, oh did you okay i wasn't sure if you yeah. did or not um i mean i can see why people were pissed because it kind of like takes away from what happened in the first film because mm. it leaves you believing that something happened and then this one's like nope none of that happened yeah but like but i didn't mind it like did you honestly think they were buried alive right like i don't know like that's i don't know. i guess like they were searching for that extreme loose skeleton stuff and then they found it right yeah so i just i don't know that was my thoughts i yeah. i i enjoyed it for what it was i do think their acting is cheesy as fuck i understand they're not actors they're playing themselves um i did enjoy the haunted houses though that's why i watch those because i love right. when they go on the haunted horse like the, they go on this one they go on a haunted hayride and they go through like a really creepy like one of those borderline torture shit that they go mm-hmm. through um and i love how like no one wants them there unless they have the chick with them which is so true no one wants to see like four dudes get scared no one cares yeah. right I, so i honestly for for what it was i thought it was fine do i think the original is better absolutely but I didn't think it was as bad as people made it out to be. Yeah, I agree. Like, I thought it was, yeah, it was a fine enough sequel. It was fun. Now, did you watch anything? Uh, I actually did. I forgot to add that to my oh. list. Uh, so I'm looking at it right now. And that, because uh, we were doing our top five 1970s horror films, I was 
watching some 70s films that I've heard of or I've seen bits of that I never mm-hmm. finished. So I decided to watch George A. Romero's Martin from 1970. Oh, nice. How was it? That was a really interesting, cool movie. Um, Because it kind of plays out where this character named Martin is... I think he must have like an iron deficiency or something like that, but he sedates women and then uses a razor blade to like cut their wrist, like not to kill them, like, but just like the slice piece on their wrist and drinks their blood because he feels he is a vampire. Oh, okay. And he's not a vampire. He's just human with a deficiency, like, and I'm guessing iron deficiency of some mm. sort, but like uh, it's been uh, smacked into his head by like, I think it was his uncle or whatever saying that, yeah, your father was a vampire and this and that and you guys are all blasphemous and you need uh, <laughs> God in your life. And so like, I think it kind of made him think of like that he was this character and just kind of started doing that. And just a really interesting character study, like uh, for something that I uh, really didn't know much about, because like, even though this is like a well-known movie, I really haven't heard a lot of podcasts cover it, like at least th- that often. So like, I don't remember a lot from when they do talk about the film. So yeah, it was nice to go into this one and watch it. And this just... Uh, just missed my honorable mentions list uh, when we did our recording for the top 70s. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, definitely recommend if you haven't seen it. Awesome. Well, thanks for bringing that to the table, Scotty. Oh, you're welcome. Um, and what we've been listening to, I beat Scott to this. <laughs> uh, so we've been talking about them a couple of times tonight, but Tim and Daniel from Horror for Dummies have a new podcast called Wrestling for Dummies. And usually we don't talk about non-horror stuff on our podcast or true crime, but it's our podcast and we do what we want. <laughs> Whatever. We do what we want. We, what do we, we want? So this podcast, if you follow AEW or WWE, this podcast is definitely for you. Uh, they don't really go into anything about Ring of Honor or TNA or any of the lesser known or J- Japanese wrestling or anything like that. But they do a really good deep dive of AEW and wwe which are i would argue probably the two major brands right now i'm sure Mm tna is not happy about that for anyone who knows wrestling um but you know what can you do it just can't compete so aw has really moved up a lot in the last couple of years they have a lot of stars now they have some great up-and-coming talent and tim and daniel do a really great job of breaking down matches and kind of doing some sports betting on who they think will be the winner now as we all know wrestling is predetermined but it's figuring out what makes more sense for the crowd and what makes more sense for the storylines. And they do a really good job of in-depth, in-depth discussion of that. I honestly, like as much as I love their horror for dummies, I actually think this is a stronger podcast for them. Wow. Uh, yeah, I do. I think, I think that if they ever had to make a choice, I think they should push this one. Um, wow, yeah, I was like, cause it is a really good show. Like and they do like, a great job. They're great for, don't get me wrong. Horror for dummies is awesome too. It's just, there's a billion horror podcasts and there's lots of wrestling podcasts too. I just like the way they do it. They sound yeah. like two wrestling fans that aren't over like, oh, the shoots and, you know, trying to use as much fucking lingo that wrestlers use and, you know, going off about Tony Khan and, and they malt her and all this other shit. Like they don't do that. They, they kind of just stick to like, you know, they know it's predetermined and they know that it's story building, but they just kind of stick to talking about that and their thoughts and their opinions and their gut reactions to it. And I find that a lot more. In, and I know a lot about wrestling. Like I'm yeah. not an average fan. <laughs> like I, I watched it for many, many years, starting back from when I was four years old to now so and i've watched ecw wcw like i had the magazines like i i definitely have a history with wrestling so um i think that their podcast is very strong so if you're a wrestling fan uh if you already subscribed to horror for dummies it should be on their feed if not i suggest checking it out uh just google horror for dummies and you'll see their wrestling or wrestling for dummies and you'll see their podcast and i I recommend listening to it i 100 percent agree because uh one thing i was going to add to it too is uh just because they are like huge fans that are just talking gut reaction and their thoughts it's a very welcoming show to people like me who are casual wrestling fans Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. like because i don't know all the terminology and all the behind the scenes stuff mm-hmm. like i know of tony khan just because i've heard it about his name a lot but uh like yeah i, I didn't know like what the shoot would be considered and all yeah. that i don't know that terminology but like they don't make you feel excluded when you listen to it like you have to yeah. do research before you listen like it's very just easy to listen to and if you're just a fan of like watching that even if it's just occasionally watching the pay-per-view here and there it's entertaining to just listen to them talk about it 
Absolutely. And I think you said that perfectly. I find that some wrestling podcasts feel the need to talk down to people. Yes. And I feel like it's the insecurity with wrestling fans. I feel the same way about fucking horror fans. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a big wrestling fan. I'm a big horror fan. Like I get it. I've been called a fucking nerd and I'm a female. Okay. Like you guys think you had it bad. You try showing up at a fucking wrestling event at eight years old and having little boys tell you that you should be there because you're a girl. Like right. I put up with shit. Right. So you know, like it's, it's fun. And I think sometimes people feel the need to flaunt their peacock feathers and get like, I don't know, like, look at me, I'm a wrestling fan. I know this and this and this and this. I'm so smart. And I know you all this. And like, yeah, I could talk about the history of Vince McMahon too and Triple H and, you know, the impact that that had and, and what him marrying Stephanie has done and issues with NXT and all that other shit. Like, but to just kind of have enough where it's a good conversation that you're not talking down to people. I think is really, really important because it, yeah. it just allows, as you said, the casual fan to enjoy. So I'm glad you brought that up, Scott. Yep. Cause yeah, I was gonna say, cause yeah, I love wrestling, but yeah, I'm more, I'm definitely a casual. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I will bring up the uh, podcast that I brought to the table today. And that is uh, from our boss himself, Mr. Bo Ransdale. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the dark parade and uh, within the dark parade, he has other mini episodes. Like I wouldn't say mini episodes, but like little kind of one off or not one offs, but uh, side projects. And uh, one of them is the dark parade presents the heart of the heart of horror with Kate Pollock and this is a this is a podcast that is like screams Scott needs to be on the show because are you are you talk- telling Bo? <laughs> I'm Bo. You listen to this, and I demand to be on this show. Just message Bo, and he'll get you on I the will. show. You know that, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. But no, this is a totally like a podcast directed towards Scott because it is uh, ro- uh, romance and horror or relationships and horror, and then they, so they pick a movie that's deals heavily with relationships and then they like will talk about something personal of theirs that coincides with like the relationship situation in the movie and so you get a little bit of like behind the scenes uh stuff from each uh from each person that's on court saps was on episode two so you get to hear a lot about like what he went through in his first love and all this stuff and uh but they did already do the uh the very first episode they already did the movie that uh, would have been perfect for me and that was after midnight but uh their second movie was spontaneous so they've done two i think they're probably just doing a once a month show with us Mm. but i find it just very cool that they're actually doing a relationships and horror type podcast specifically for those types of films and i wanted to give them a shout out for that because i yeah i i want to be on the show and i just love it (laughs) well scotty wants to be on the show Bo, so you better have him on uh that's the message we got today and yeah. please subscribe to the legion podcast network you can hear this show and a variety of other awesome shows that are on there as well so thank you again scotty for bringing this one to the table you're welcome scotty's always bringing the knowledge i'm bringing the smoke in this. right he brings his wizard staff game of thrones <sighs> not wrestling oh. but just like <laughs> which is code for sex everybody in case you're wondering <laughs> That by the, I can I be on a show that just talks about sex? Maybe like, and then my first love. I'm like, my first bang. My feelings. No, I, I remember my first bang. I I love a lot of people. I'm one big yeah. care bear, and I've been loved and been hurt, and maybe that's why I'm so bitter now. Uh, <laughs> like honestly, maybe maybe the Heather heart's been shattered just one too many times, one too many marriages, and now she's just broken as a person. On that happy note, uh, please subscribe to the Legion podcast. <laughs> network but no all joking aside it's nice to see variety and fresh faces as well uh coming onto the legion podcast network which is why we really encourage you to subscribe so we will take a brief break and we will hear from one of our many legion friends um so after these messages we'll be right back this will keep it quiet oh hi there i didn't see you you caught me cutting a new show I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing... All the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, 
you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon. And for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. We appreciate it and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. And welcome back. As we discussed earlier, we are going to be talking about retail horror today. Uh, All the horrible things that happen when you go shopping on Black Friday, Boxing Day, I don't know, online shopping on Cyber Monday. Not too sure if anything bad will happen to you then, but... And, but where did the history of Black Friday come from? So I did a little bit of Googling and I managed to find an article on at history.com from the History Camp channel. And it's what is the real history of Black Friday? So the first recorded use of the term Black Friday was applied not only to post Thanksgiving holiday shopping, but to the financial crisis, specifically the crash of the U.S. gold market on September 24th, 1869. Two notorious, ruthless Wall Street financiers, Jay Gold and Jim Fisk, worked together to buy up as much as they could of the nation's gold, hoping to drive the price sky high and sell it for very high profits. On that Friday in September, the conspiracy finally unraveled, sending the stock market into free fall and bankrupting everyone from Wall Street barons to farmers. Oh, sounds super depressing. The most commonly repeated story behind the Thanksgiving shopping relates to Black Friday's traditions linked to its retailers. As the story goes, after an entire year of operating at a loss in the red, stores would supposedly earn a profit when into the black on the day after Thanksgiving because holiday shoppers lose so much money on discounted merchandise. Though Though it's true that retail companies used to record losses in red and profits in black when doing their accounting, this version of Black Friday's origins is often sanctioned but inaccurate story behind the tradition. So what is the real tradition? In recent years, another myth has service that gives particularly ugly twists to their tradition, claiming that back in the 1800s, a Southern plantation owner could buy enslaved workers at a discount at a discount Damn. on the day after Thanksgiving. Through this version of Black Friday roots has understandably led some to boycott the retail holiday and it has no base in fact. So even though this has been a rumor, there is no historical base that backs this up. So those are the three different rumors behind Black Friday. But the real history behind Black Friday, however, is not as sunny as retailers might have you believe. Back in 1950, police in the city of Philadelphia used the term to to describe the chaos that ensured on the day after Thanksgiving, when hordes of suburban shoppers and tourists flooded into the city in advance of the big army navy football game held that saturday every year not only would philly cops not be able to take the day off but they would have to work extra long shifts dealing with additional crowds and traffic shoplifters would also take advantage of the bed, the chaos in the stores to make off with merchandise adding to the law enforcement adding adding to law enforcement's headache By 1961, Black Friday had caught on in Philadelphia, and to the extent that the city merchants and boosters tried to, or boasters, yeah, tried to unsuccessfully change it to Big Friday. (laughs) We're going to call it Big Friday. Big Friday. In order to remove the negative assumptions around it. The term did not spread to the rest of the country until much later. However, as recent as 1985, it wasn't in common use nationally. Sometime in the late 1980s, however, retailers find a way to reinvent Black Friday and turn it into something that reflected positivity rather than negativity. And the result was red to black concept of the holiday mentioned earlier. And the notion that the day after Thanksgiving marked the occasion when American stores could finally turn a profit. The Black Friday story stuck. And pretty soon the term the term's darker roots in Philadelphia was largely forgotten, though still stays the same. Yeah. The idea of people swarming stores, stealing shit, acting like assholes is still very much relevant. Oh, it absolutely um, is. Right. Since then, day one sales have morphed into a four day events or a month event. 
and spawned other retail holidays such as Small Business Saturday, Sunday, and Cyber Monday. Stores started to open earlier and earlier on that Friday, and now most dedicated shoppers can head out right after their Thanksgiving meal. So... Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, Black Friday and retail is is definitely a beast to be seen. Unfortunately, there's a Black Friday movie that's coming out, but it wasn't dropped in time enough for this episode. So we had to choose some other films, but we chose some really fun retail horror films to to talk about, ranging from the 70s to just this year. So Scotty, why don't you take us away with our first one? All right. So the very first film we're going to talk about, eh, I don't think anybody's ever heard of this film, but that is George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead, released April 7th, 1979. Following an ever-growing epidemic of zombies that have risen from the dead, two Philadelphia SWAT team members, a traffic reporter, and his television executive girlfriend seek refuge in a secluded shopping mall. And, you know, this one, this movie's been talked about and dissected a million freaking times, but, you know, this was George A. Romero's, uh, like, metaphor for consumerism. And when shopping malls were, like, such a big deal and everybody always going to them, you, hence the line uh, when they're like, mm-hmm. why do you think they're here? Well, this is what they're used to. They This is something familiar for them. They came here all the time before they died. Like, yeah, they, this is totally just, like, you know, saying how popular these giant malls were back in the day Mm -hmm. and totally fits for the whole retail horror black friday theme because yeah this is just you know malls were just giant retail buildings full of different stores and And, black friday does have hordes of people swarming you know and and trying and we see that with some of these movies we do see two in particular we see the version of a swarm Yes. Um, you know, even in Dawn of the Dead, even though it's zombies, we're still watching people swarm, <laughs> trying to break into a mall and or trying to break into stores, banging on windows and stuff like that. We we do see a lot of similar behavior. Now we watched the two and a half hour version, by the way. Yeah, I think that's uh, the Argento cut. Holy fuck, was it long? Yeah. Um, and I did not need that extra time of watching these guys go to like basically the background for everybody i didn't need that i really didn't need that long of that time personally yeah like there's a reason that it's you know a two-hour movie like the theatrical cut is yeah i definitely enjoy the two-hour movie mall because more mall (laughs) more (laughs) though i did find some of the lines in this cheesy okay i'll be very honest not that i'm like retail is god but there's one part where they're in the mall and they realize there's food, water, shelter, supplies, everything. Like it actually makes sense to stay there. Oh, absolutely. Does, you know yeah. what I mean? And the and the chick's like, oh, you're you're mesmerized by the by this place and you're gonna get like, yeah, bitch, I am, because we got fucking water and food and we're ammo. Out, we're, we're low on clothing. gas with the helicopter. <laughs> like, why would we go somewhere and then have no way to defend ourselves? And yeah. no food and no water and nowhere to sleep and nothing to keep us safe. Yeah. Like, and, and this is a place that has like stores up the ass that have supplies that you could use for almost everyday things. Like if I was in a zombie apop- apop- apocalypse and I was like, okay, my first thought would be like, where can I go that I can sleep and not be worried about being attacked? Second thought, is there food and water there? Yeah. Like those are the basics of survival. So that's the only thing about this movie that irritated me when it comes to the retail shit of it. Because I was like, no, actually, it's pretty smart to be in a mall. Yeah. Like, no, oh, that actually yeah. makes a lot of sense. Uh, but I did appreciate what George A. Romano was trying to do with this and having all the stores and people kind of just wandering around and banging on stuff and going through the motions of going up and down the escalator, kind of walking around aimlessly. And we've all done this. We've all gone to a mall and walked around aimlessly, gone up and down escalators and probably spent money on things we didn't need, which was the development of the mall. The idea that you could go in a condensed area that was sheltered, that was climate controlled and take your time and if something wasn't at one store you could go to another store which also increased capitalism and competition of prices because instead of me having to get in my car and drive to another store i could just walk to that other store and then come back i do this now i went boot shopping a couple of weeks ago and i did a whole survey of the mall to see what boots i liked tried on some at some stores and then went back and decided which one i wanted to buy and i made my decision on comfort and affordability and look 
right? So like I do that now and I, you know, I'm not a big mall shopper. I usually go for a purpose and I don't buy what I'm not tending to buy usually, but I almost did buy a a skirt because I kind of got caught up in being at the mall. So I do understand Dory J. Romano's use of this and the incorporation of the zombies. I do think it's rather clever. Oh yeah. It was especially for the time. It was really freaking brilliant. And like, because like I said, you know, malls were just becoming super popular at that time in the 70s. And like, obviously, we'll be hitting more of this as we go along into the 80s, because that's when it like hit its climax. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, like around here, uh, as you have seen, most of the malls are not the best anymore. And they're dying out where, you know, we still have the big fancy mall that we went to right before our or right after the horror con, the Astronomic Con, uh, the Great Lakes Crossing Mall. That one was still huge and no closed stores or anything like that. But the one near my house is like half empty. So it's like, it's definitely a product of its time now. So like, it's interesting to go back and see like a lot of these stores and just like how like it would be an amazing place to survive. Cause yeah, like even back then. And I mean, what screams America more than walking into a mall and seeing a gun store. (laughs) Right. And like sporting good stuff too. Right. Like there's that scene where they go around and they, and they try on all these different outfits and like, there's been so many things that have been based in being locked in a mall and having access to all this cool shit because unless you have the money to afford it you can't buy it but in that situation money doesn't mean anything anymore even when they take money out of the bank they're like well i guess we'll take it just in case but like like, it doesn't really have back to normal right but it doesn't really have the meaning that it used to have and i think that where malls have progressed now is that especially up here we have high-end malls So you have your malls that are kind of like, you know, your low, like your lower tier stores, but then you have the stores with like Lululemon, not Lululemon, uh, Louis Vuitton and trying to hold Redford and Canada Goose, which is a very high brand. I know it sounds silly, but it's high brand jackets. Um, Total Canadian Canada Goose. Oh yeah. And they're like, jackets are like 800 fucking dollars um what else do they have that's tiffany and co like there's a mall that's called yorkdale and it's all like there's a fucking tesla dealership in the mall holy crap like it is just a high-end very expensive mall and you're going there to buy brand names that's what you're going there for wow right so and then there's other malls that are kind of like oh you got the gaps and you know maybe you have banana republic and hot topic yeah hot topic right so like it's really, really interesting how malls have changed. We're back in the seventies. It was just whoever could afford rent and was able to go into that space. And, you know, you had structured hours, all the stores were open at the same time. They closed at the same time. There was, you know, a building that was taking care of the facilities for the stores that there was responsibility for. So the store owners weren't responsible for the upkeep of the outside of their shops anymore. Like it's a very interesting concept when yeah. you, when you really dig deep into the, to the development of malls, there was a lot of good that came with it. But I think what this movie really did was emphasize how it can be also very claustrophobic and yes. you can have people that, you know, very easily you get overwhelmed and stampeded in these mall in this mall. And even at the end, when they escape, only a few of them escape. And even when the biker gang comes in, like they just rob and pillar and take things, even though there's like, they didn't need to act like how they act. They could have just walked into the mall and took shit, but they had to go and create chaos. Yeah, Um, and like they even mentioned when mm -hmm. the biker gang was showing up, like, oh, well, like, do you think they're dangerous? Oh yeah, they're absolutely dangerous. Look at them. They're on their bikes and a giant, as basically as an army, and they have been on the road this whole entire time surviving. So like they're survivalists, these guys are, and yet they, yeah, get cornered inside a mall and they all get destroyed because they're foolish. Well, and it just shows the power of capitalism, right? Is that these guys could have just kept going um, and they could have been fine, but they weren't because they continued to push through and just (laughs) take, 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 because that was the concept behind the capitalism of the mall. And that's Mm -hmm. what happened to them. Right. So I do really credit George A. Romano's Dawn of the Dead here, even though I don't agree with all the messages because I'm like, well, where else were they going to go? And like, yeah, I probably do the same thing and have like a whole fucking dress up session. And, you know, I can't say I would do anything differently. I don't feel bad about that either. Like we live in a consumer society and we have capitalism as our main thing. And whether that's right or wrong or indifferent, that's the way the world functions at this point. Um, But yeah, I do think it was really cool how they did the zombies and and what they were kind of pulling in with retail behavior. 
Yeah, and I was just saying, I like that every one of these movies we picked, like the whole entire movie focuses on that retail aspect because mm-hmm. there's a lot of movies we could have chose that like ended up at the end, like ended up at the mall at the end or something like that. But like, no, these movies like stay in these retail buildings for like the majority of the film, which is kind of why we chose these ones specifically. Yeah, we really focused in on the shopping concept of it, which moves yeah. to... Scott's girlfriend's in this movie. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Mm. <laughs> my wife. <laughs> my wife. My wife. <laughs> um, that's yeah, that's... who he's actually dating. That's why I can't say anything. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, sorry, uh, sorry, Ken Bates. I, I took her from you. <laughs> but uh the next movie we're gonna talk about is Chopping Mall from uh March 21st, 1986. Eight, eight teenagers get trapped in a shopping center after hours or after hours and three murderous security robots chase them. Um, well, they necessarily didn't get trapped in the mall. They stayed after to party and have the sexy times in the bedrooms. <laughs> sexy times. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, this has uh, like... I can't remember the other actress's name, but she was from Night of the Comet and then uh, Barbara Crampton. And um, so like, yeah, Barbara Crampton. But uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, Heather keeps teasing me because I always talk highly about her. Uh, but yeah, this is another one that's like totally focused on the 80s love of uh, shopping malls. Uh, you you get to see like uh, recognizable store names like Sam Goody and like other different stores in this. And it's uh, does the whole, uh, you know, just because there's a mall that gets shut down at nighttime, you're going to need security. So let's get these robots that will help uh, wander the halls and take care of any intruders. And of course, in any typical horror movie fashion, like they malfunction and start just taking out everybody. And they are just the most adorable looking robots I've ever seen and I want one just to be my friend (laughs) you know I think it's funny because this movie also was talking about the birth of computers and technology and the fears of what could happen right the automation yeah right so it's it's a mix between retail and automation and of course you know the mall is developed to this you know place where people come and they hang out where your kids they're at the mall you know where they are well actually that's in the second one they talk about that a little bit more but this one it's the idea of keeping the mall safe and keeping people's stuff safe so people aren't breaking into the mall and stealing stuff from stores and you know you have these robot security guards that aren't like human security guards like they can function for long periods of time and what i really stands out to me in this movie is how great some of these kills are i'll be honest oh, like yeah you know i think they really do utilize the mall well like when he goes down to get cigarettes the dude and he gets killed by the robot or when Barbara Crampton gets killed, like it's some really, like she gets lit on fire, right? Like, yeah, and it's an awesome freaking full body burn. They do too. Awesome. Awesome scene. Right. And like, they're running around up and down escalators, trying to get away from these robots. <laughs> and like That are somehow still catching up to them, even though they're just like these giant, like, Oh my gosh. Unwieldy fucking tank treaded machines. <laughs> and a shout out to Dick Miller, who has a cameo. Ah, uh, yes. As, Good a, old Dick as Miller. the janitor, the I, rusty, I, brutal janitor that's working away. He's great. Okay. I got to do this. Every time Dick Miller gets brought up, me and, me and Tim, whenever we see him in the movie, we're, we just go, Dick Miller. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but it's like, Dick Miller. Dick Miller. I love it. That's awesome. Well, he's great. You know, he yeah, really yeah. is really cool. And the creepy security guards that work there, and then like, how the the robots go like evil and shit like anyway it's great thank you have a great day (laughs) oh my gosh it's so it's it's not so much about shopping because the mall is closed for majority of it uh you just kind of figure out like why they're there is because the one guy's dad owns a department store and he can get away with having his friends there but it's it really is kind of a it just showcases technology with the mall and and a lot of cool kills and a lot of cheesy lines and who's the main chick that ends up being the protagonist she's the one from night of the comet that i can't remember allison parks it's kelly yeah right so allison is great she fights back and her and who's the dude that lives at the end paul i think it was I'm Is terrible with character names. Right. And they basically managed to survive the robots and 
beat them at their own game. It's great. You know, this wasn't a lot about shopping, honestly, but we chose shopping mall because it's just using the idea of these kids hanging out in the mall, even after hours and the security and and the mall developing. And it does do a really cool, like 80s style montage in the very beginning of like the people shopping at the mall, going to the food court and like, you know, trying to weave around the people as you're carrying your tray of food and um, that's true i forgot about that part right in the spillage that happens and all that other yeah stuff. so you get to see a bit like you get to see the consumerism at work but just not focused on it com- entirely um and one thing this is just a personal thing i have to say but oh my god the guy that goes and gets cigarettes the bubblegum chew bubblegum chewing asshole uh he's he was also death stalker and death stalker too that we did for it's not horror okay oh this was dude, he yep this dude just has the most punchable face i just want to punch him <laughs> in the face so bad like just the way he looks just just i just really want to punch him in the face so bad scott I don't just want. doesn't scott's just a bully that's what i am a bully <laughs> scott doesn't like anyone he's just a big bully i hate uh, everybody <laughs> speaking of bullies developers are bullies Ooh. and that leads us to our next film good good segue all uh-huh. right uh-huh. this is why i have you on the show no. that's right <laughs> i'm the brains um, behind that body of yours <laughs> yeah. take you to the gun show <laughs> <laughs> all right so the third movie we're going to talk about tonight is phantom of the mall eric's revenge Released December 1st, 1989, a masked killer stalks a waitress in a shopping mall just opened by a California mayor. Uh, This is basically Phantom of the Opera inside a shopping mall, Um, which, yeah, this was a first time watch for me. I've heard of this movie. Me too. I I have to say, I had fun with it. It Yeah, it's it's like a TV movie that's like not shitty. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Yeah, because I was gonna say because it like doesn't have a lot of gore or violence like that. Like it gives you like a lot of the kills were off screen, but like I love this idea of like this. Pretty much the killer is this uh, teenager that his house gets burnt down because mm-hmm. it's in the area where they wanted to develop a mall. Mm-hmm. So uh, this uh, mayor, I think, yeah, the mayor like hires these goons to basically catch their house on fire to just clear it out of the way to put this mall in and unfortunately the teenager was in there catches fire well now he is uh hiding in the bowels of the mall now he's the phantom of the mall yes and i love how he gets like breaks a mannequin face and uses just half of a mannequin face for his phantom mask basically oh it's great it's really great and yeah then he just stalks the people that were involved with like him being uh hurt during this fire and all that and it's just a totally fun 80s slasher there's some um, great lines like when the developer talks about now you know where your kids are they're at the mall you can get everything you want at the mall and they have a piano player in yeah. the mall and i'm sure there were times that that happened that you would have an entertainer in the mall i'm yep. i'm not doubting that at all right and i i thought that was really cool and then they Polly shores in this film he yes, works at an I'm... ice cream shop <laughs> um and Polly shore is actually really clever in this i'll be honest he's quite likable there's yeah. there's lots of parts of the mall. There's the shopping. So there's the stores. The two young ladies work as servers at a restaurant. So you see that piece of it. You see shops. Another young lady works at one of the shops. Uh, and then there's like the developer's son's just an asshole that runs around the mall and causes problems. There's an arcade. So for anyone yes. who used to go to a mall and they would have an arcade there and all that stuff was there to keep you there for a longer period of time. Same reason why they had movie theaters and malls, because you would have to walk through the mall to get to the movie theater. Mm -hmm. And that would force you to see things and want to shop and buy things. Same with restaurants being in the movie theater, like whatever could get a draw. And that's what arcades used to do. Drop your kid off at the arcade and go do shopping. Yeah. Right. Give them like five bucks and play in the arcade while uh, mom goes and buys new shoes. Yep. That's what I used to do. Right. So like it was, it was smart. Like, and I really kind of appreciated like the scenery of seeing all different parts of the mall and even seeing like behind the scenes of the mall kind of thing. Which uh, we got something that ties into Chopping Mall here. This is the exact same mall that was used in Chopping Mall. Oh, that's cool. So which mall is it? I can't remember the name of it, but it was uh, Brian Salmon's actually literally was reviewing this movie on Facebook as I was watching it. Mm. And he was bringing up all this tidbits of like information saying that, yep, this is the exact same mall that was filmed uh, for Chopping Mall and everything. I'm going, no shit. Like, and then as I'm looking at both films, I'm going, yeah, like there's parts that I recognized in both movies. I just thought that was kind of neat that they use the exact same mall for this. Yeah, I that's awesome. And yeah, wow, that's cool. Yeah, and, I, um, 
I like how they also look once again, they show the food court where, you know, Polly Shore works. So they're, yeah. they're showing you different aspects. Like there's not just stores, like you said, like it's showing yeah. you every aspect of the mall. Well, it shows you the whole shopping experience, right? And then as people get off, you have the creepy security guards that are like leering at the girls in the change rooms. And oh, yeah. Being yeah. real creepy pieces of shit that get killed. Uh, you have the guy that the, the developer's son, who's like a real asshole that gets killed. Like, to be honest, like for the first half of the movie, the people that get killed, you're like, well, they're kind of dicks. So right, I don't that's care. good. Like no one really gives a shit that they're dead. It's only as the movie goes on and they put together that this developer had something to do with Eric's death and she's being stalked and the reporter guy is trying to figure it out. Like it's a good mix with a mystery. It's more of a mystery than it is a horror, but it's entertaining. And for what seems to be like a made for TV film, I I enjoyed it. I think it yeah. flows well. I think the ending is, you know, if you've seen the Phantom of the Opera, you kind of know what the ending is going to be. Now, mind you, there was no background between the Phantom and Christine in the Phantom of the Opera. Like she was a singer that he fell in love with and shit. But like, I did like how they kind of get reunited and she's like, well, things have changed. I'm now in love with this other guy who like for the half of the movie, she can stop talking about Eric and somehow like (laughs) fell in love with this other dude, but that's fine. It's either here or there. Um, I, I enjoyed how he kind of like freaked out and was like, no, we can live in the mall. I'm going to blow up the mall. And like, then they're trying to get people to evacuate the mall. Like it's, it's very good when it talks about the mall becoming the Mecca of everything and the anger that this young man has, because he feels that this commercialism has taken away, taken his life yes. um, and his ability to live a normal life. And I think that's really what this movie captures. Oh, it does. And uh, one thing I liked about this one, like you get a little bit of this in Dawn of the Dead, but you get a little more uh, behind the scenes of the mall, like the mm-hmm. like the basement uh, mm-hmm. where he's like, and you get to see like, since he knows the mall so well, you see him up in the rafters and stuff like that too. Yeah. Like, it shows him not just the stores and all that stuff. It's showing all over the place, which I thought was really cool. Kind of like what Dawn of the Dead does. It shows like the storage room, the hiding, the aqueducts that they're crawling through and all that yeah. stuff. Like it's literally yeah. just like, yep, we're using this as this is his world. He does not yeah. leave his, this world. Like yeah. his world is the retail. Absolutely. No, it's a very good immersive experience. And it, it doesn't, it talks about the evils of commercialism in a different way. Each each movie does. You know, Dawn of yeah. Dead is more in your face. Chopping Mall is more like commercialism and technology and look what we've created, trying to protect and you know, have a nice day and shit like that. <laughs> you know, that the robot says ironically as it's killing you. <laughs> and then in this movie, it's it's like the commercialism ripped away from this young man everything that he could have for the sake of building these these shops and for the mayor looking good and making money for the community and who cares about the poor people. Like it was it was very much like a little bit of a social context without being over the top. It was right. social context like. Um, which is fine. That's okay. Yeah. So yeah, I honestly, for a first time watch, I enjoyed it too. It was a nice little like uh, capture of Polly Shore too when he was a baby. Yeah, I, when I seen that, I was just going, "Oh my god, it's Polly Shore! Holy shit!" Like I was, baby Polly Shore. Baby. I was I was waiting for him to go. Do you want to wheeze the juice? <laughs> <laughs> now but, you know. Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, but yeah, like I do like the uh, social commentary like of this of this film in there. And speaking of which. Ah, social commentary 30 years later uh we have a film that will definitely be in my top 10 spoiler oh, i don't fucking yeah. care it's awesome and watching it a second time mwah. this movie mwah. i don't care what you think brandon <laughs> um but yeah we will give give it the start there uh we will be spoiling this film but the film we are talking about is slacks Mm-hmm. released september 11th uh 2020 uh 2020, 2020 in, canada. in canada it was released this year i think it was on shutter right yes yep it was a shutter yeah. exclusive so we counted it for 2021 because it had a limited release in canada last year because it was one of the it probably only got to the theaters because they're like oh my god this movie <laughs> it <was Right>. COVID <laughs> and they like, sent it to, like i couldn't even watch it around me it was it right. was released in toronto only um so it was very very tough to come by and i remember reading the synopsis and thinking this sounds dumb so i'll let you read the synopsis all right so the synopsis is a possessed pair of jeans terrorizes trapped workers at a trending a trendy clothing store that's it killer jeans that's what we get here surprisingly enough a movie about killer jeans that works wonderfully and has a good message (laughs) yeah little did i expect and I think for Canadians watching this who are aware of the company roots, 
this is definitely, I remember talking to Christian after he watched this and he was like, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'm like, did you think it was a dig at Roots? He's like, I didn't tell you said that, but yeah, now I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Roots is a very popular Canadian chain. It boasts things like um, that it's a fair trade company and that it comes and builds stuff straight from cotton, the finest cotton. And the fair trade and treats its employees well, and it's very expensive and has a lot of sweatpants and a lot of neutral color shade. Notice the theme slacks in this movie mm-hmm. cut <laughs> in the slacks film. Um, I think the company's called the Canadian Cotton. What is it? The Canadian Cotton yeah. something or other. Yeah, so all I remember is CCC is what they always call it. CCC is what they call themselves. And it starts off not in a mall. It starts off in some cotton fields in India. And we see a young lady picking cotton and it kind of goes from there. And even the opening of this going into this fucking trendy store, it's the Canadian cotton clothers. That's what it's uh, That's what it was. Right. Uh, <laughs> oh, and I was going to say, and don't forget when we're talking about uh, in India with the cotton fields, it was an experimental cotton. Field. Yes. An experimental because of the finest cotton. Yes. Um, and this is just like every single fucking like, it was also making fun of Lululemon with the, this is a lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> like, and this young girl goes to work at this place and it is, if you've ever worked in retail, this movie is for you. Like the other movies were cute for nostalgia of what it's like to work in retail and like, oh, being in a mall and like, all the fun things you have with your friends. This one was like real talk of like (laughs) how shady retail is and how like the, even the employee theft signs hurt being posted fucking everywhere. Um, I don't know if you've ever worked retail, Scott, I worked for a Canadian company called Reitman's and it was like that. Like literally you would go into the bathroom and it said theft hurts and it had a banner on the mirrors. Like it was like that completely. So (laughs) I really like what I really like about this film is it's based upon the opening night before Monday Madness, which is, you know, making fun of Midnight Madness, right? Yeah. And these new jeans have come in and they're the shapeshifters and they're, they're supposed to make your, your body look hotter than ever before. And this young lady comes, she wants to get a job there. You know, she's trying to fit in. She has to buy the clothing, which costs her an extraordinary amount of money, which talk about capitalism. Right. Um, it costs her like $175 for a couple of items. She's like, well, I get an employee discount. They're like, well, you don't start till midnight. So no. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Like, oh, oh my and, God. And you bought clothing from the store. Oh, that's cute. That's out of season. You need what's in season right now. And that was three months ago. Honey. And that's not wrong. Like that no. is absolutely no. accurate. I used to have to wear clothes clothes from Reitman's that were in season and I would only be allowed to wear certain shoes on the floor and like it's like that's what I love about this fucking film it captures retail like yeah nothing before um anyway where the horror comes in is this is a spoiler for this movie the young lady that opened the film uh is killed when the jeans are the cotton's being processed and her spirit haunts these jeans. So these cottons were made into these slack shapeshifter jeans because it's this new technology, blah, 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 blah. And the jeans come to life. And the special effects in this are fucking phenomenal. Oh, they really are. Like, yeah. I am impressed how they did this. <laughs> so anyway, the jeans end up going on a killing spree. So they kill subtly at first and the kills are awesome. There's a girl mm-hmm. in the washroom that's killed. Uh, there's a guy that's killed in a in a room and then a YouTuber blogger gets killed and it's just fucking mint. Like yeah, it's, I was gonna say, and, and they nailed the YouTube vlogger with all of her followers oh, going to this designer man. store and like she's getting special access to things that aren't released yet and doing the video, like showing like total uh what is that term? The uh so influencer? Yes, influencer, yes. Right. Total clothing, like uh designer clothing influencer. Like it's just so funny even the manager is such a typical retail manager with like and they say stupid things like how's your ecosystem coming (laughs) like when there's like staging stuff like it's just the movie that you got to see because it captures the current day of retail where they basically put bow tie on poo they're like well it's capitalism but it's capitalism you can feel okay about because we do fair trade and we call our people like partners or shareholders or whatever their names are, which is also a dig at Starbucks. Mm-hmm. Um, and we make sure that, you know, everyone is treated fairly and we have ecosystems and we're building a better tomorrow today. 
So you can feel good about shopping here. It really plays into the whole Whole Foods mentality, Roots mentality, Starbucks with their fair trade coffee. And as the movie goes on, you realize that you don't really know if something's fair trade or not, because you find out that the young lady who was killed was 13 years old, which means they were engaging in child labor. Yep. And the store manager is like, we have no idea. We have subcontractors. We and so as everything gets exposed, the dirty underseat of retail is coming out. But there's even some comments about body image in here that is actually really interesting as well. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, uh, there's one some girl subtle, saying, subtle things. I had my uh, 20 calories today. I can't eat anymore if I want to fit right. into these jeans. I'm just like right? total body image stuff. Well, even when the manager goes, oh, it's so shame that like this girl's mutilated by these jeans. These jeans basically ripped her from the inside out. Yeah. He's like, body image is such a killer, you know? And <laughs> <laughs> the new girl's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I can't believe this is the same girl from Killer Prom. Just so we're clear, it's yeah, the same actress right. that was in Killer Prom. So <laughs> shows that, that she can act, that it wasn't her, it was Killer Prom. Yeah. And the ending scene of this, where we're just going to jump ahead from some awesome kills that happen and some really great dialogue is the the girl that was killed kira wasn't you know was going to tell her story and then the manager fucks it up by yeah, being a dick and she's possessed all the genes and people are banging at the door trying to get in and our main care sorry which is totally typical of black friday totally and that's why i'm really glad we're ending with this film yeah because this is what black friday's become you know we moved away from the happy feel good malls like it's kind of gone back to the dawn of the dead mentality only more vicious yes and you know she's begging kira this will not bring justice kira don't do this and she tries to stop so there's an alarm that sets the doors off to open and she's trying to hold the doors and stop people and she gets stampeded to death yeah and so that happens yeah yeah it does (laughs) right like that was horror imitating life imitating horror yeah and it's just so sad that that for material possessions right and you you know the ending scene and again spoilers here you see the main character bleeding out by the head dying slowly watching the carnage because the moment these people come into the store it's mass murder yeah like right? the whole place just gets coated in red and it really sends a very well done message of consumerism that i don't think we've seen since dawn of the dead about how we try to transfer things to this fair trade organic right thing i buy from this company and i think the reality is when you're buying from big corporations you're not necessarily supporting what they say you're supporting right and how would you know and how would you know like honestly am i really going to go to starbucks head office and be like show me a map of the organic coffee fields that you pick these beans from Right. And I want to see that you're paying your farmers equitably. I'm not going to get that information. And no. I'm not trying to be a martyr for small businesses here. But if I go to a small business and I purchase a coffee, yeah, I don't know if they're getting their beans ethically sourced either. But I know that money's going back into that business and those people to support them. Yes, exactly. Right. I, I know, generally speaking, if you know, I go to a lot of drag shows And I go to support the LGBTQ plus community. And I know that if I donate money to a cause, Adam and Steve are donating it because they make no profits from those shows. They're the two promoters that run it. Everything goes back to the performers or whatever organization they work for, like that they're donating to, right? And I'm not being like, oh, look at me. I'm so ethical. I don't think I am either. Like I buy from Starbucks. Like let's make something very fucking clear here. Um, I wear Kate Spade. Like I'm not by any stance on my high horse and being like, no, oh, not me. I'm just saying it's, I, I don't, I, I think the biggest thing is don't be fooled. Yeah. Right? I was going to say, uh, well, yeah, you're obviously not the type to go, oh, look at me. No, that's the people that only shop at these types of stores. Oh, yeah. look at me. Look how good I'm doing for the world. No, you're not. <laughs> Well, you don't know if you are. Maybe right. you are. Maybe, you know. But if you're, but if it's a maybe. giant corporate, if it's a giant corporation, I highly doubt it. Right. Like, it's just one of those things where it's very and and corporations, you know, that's how they make their profit is by coming across as ethical because that's a trendy thing to do. You know, back in the in the mall days when malls first opened, let's have an arcade because parents can drop off their kids and the video game manufacturers like, fuck, yeah, we can capture kids and get them in here for hours. 
and people will spend money. Like that was a whole mechanism to spend money. So right. what Slack's done is just basically been like, oh, it's still happening now, everybody. You just put a, like my favorite phrase is you can put a bow tie on poo, but it's still poo. It's just exactly. prettier with a bow tie on, right? And that's fine. But I think this movie had a lot of, um, a lot of really good messages without being over the top, but at the same time being funny and just that ending on that really dark note because you feel bad for the main character. You actually don't yeah. want anything to happen to her. And when it does, it's it's shitty, right? Yeah, because she's the type that is just like super excited to be there, wanting to like just be a part of this uh, company mm -hmm. just because of the good things she's heard them do. And when she finds out they don't, she's yeah. devastated, yeah. right? And like no one gets out of this alive. Nobody. No. Right? But it's a small price to pay for what that company had done to people in another country, right? Yeah, exactly. Like how many, how many people were killed by coffee machines? Right. How many people have passed out in the fields? You know, how much child labor actually goes on? Do we really want to know? Because if we know right. we can't, like, what other options do we have? You know, yeah. like, are you going to milk your own sneakers? Like, I'm not trying to be like condescending here. I'm sure there are companies that are very ethically sourced, but they're more expensive yeah. because the reality is cheap labor in third world countries, which, you know, India is considered is cheaper and it's more affordable for corporations to make money in a capitalist system. Like this is a, an over, you know, um, a bigger issue. And I do think this movie does a good job of kind of wrapping it up for 2021. Oh, it absolutely does. Like this was a good cap off for our topic too. Absolutely. So enjoy your shopping, everybody for Black Friday on that happy note. <laughs> yeah, and stay safe. <laughs> stay safe and don't trample people. And if you see a bunch of killer jeans, I don't know, avoid them. If you see some zombies, maybe don't go there. Stay or, away from the killer robots. Or if you do see a pair of killer jeans, I mean, they're killer for a reason. So if you're feeling frisky, try them on. <laughs> I mean, they're killer. Scott's like, I was looking to get action from those jeans. I right, was thinking, exactly. hey. I mean, you've seen how it was slurping up blood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Scotty. That was good. That was a good one. I'm very impressed with you. Look at you yeah. go, huh? Yeah. Well, I guess we'll move over to our out of the dark segment. Scott's getting pretty frisky, so we better mm -hmm. move along so he can get to other activities. <laughs> this evening <laughs> good lord his D, D, everybody that's what he's getting and magic he's gonna go yes. do some fireballs fireball fireball fireball, fireball. i ball. am the wizard <laughs> you know who you are you're that kid from nightmare on elm street three like, oh hell yeah i am <laughs> you are damn i'm right. the chick that dies of heroin overdose that's who i want to be <laughs> yeah i'm beautiful and bad that's that would be something i would say <laughs> um anyway we're just going to finish off on our 2021 must watches because we have something very special planned for our next episodes in december a christmas gift or holiday celebration or whatever it is that you celebrate that scott and i will be giving to you but first yeah. my my 2021 must watch list i won't give too much away about the movies um, I'll just say why I think you should watch them is the beta test. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to see this one yet, I already talked about it earlier, please do. Werewolves Within, awesome horror comedy, very funny, available on Shudder. Babysitter Must Die, uh, available on Prime. Check it out. It's really, really good. Untitled horror movie. I think this one's also available on Shudder. Was it Shudder? Um, no, this one, I don't remember. I think this one was Prime. Prime. Uh, Seance, available on Shudder. And Digging to Death, available on Prime. All of these movies I recommend checking out. I think, uh, you know, Untitled Horror Movie and Werewolves Within are hilarious. So is the beta test. And I just really enjoyed the concept behind Babysitter Must Die, Seance, and Digging to Death. Yeah, those are all really good ones. And yeah, Digging to Death was one I was going to pick that I seen yet on the list. I'm like, ah, all right, cool. But yeah, uh, and Werewolves Within, I have to say, uh, unexpected how entertaining that was. Oh man, I love that movie. I don't know if yeah. you liked it as much as I did, but I really liked it. Oh, I really loved it. Like, oh, did you? Okay, I couldn't yeah, remember. And, like, and it's based off a video game, so it made me even yeah. more shocked how well it was for a video game movie. Because Which like, is pretty cool, right? Yeah. yeah. Not usually, no. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to, I brought uh, four. I have three written down and I just looked up another one I wanted to talk about. But the one I'm going to talk about that's not written down is Don't Tell a Soul with Rain Wilson. Um, this one, uh, we've talked about it before, but it can be found on Amazon, iTunes, Vudu, Google Play, and it's basically about a uh, fugitive that chases after these kids and falls down a hole and the kids trap them and you start to see more and more stuff as it gets unveiled and everything unravels and it goes a pretty dark route in a way. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, very well done movie. Um, that I also came out in January. This year. It January, 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 February, and it was a really good one. Wow, I didn't realize. It was Same January. with the Fear of Rain that came out early on this year too. Like, and that's why I'm glad we're doing this because we're pulling back to stuff that came out. Mind you, we saw Seance before it got dropped on Shutter, so we were talking about yeah. it a while ago. But yeah, I'm glad we're bringing this up because it's important that people don't miss out these bad boys. Because if you just stick the theater watches and low hanging fruit, you're going to miss these. Um, yeah, exactly. Right. Like these ones are just kind of under the radar. Um, yeah. Another one, uh, Howard's Mill. This one was recommended by Brandon Orlick. And I think you also recommended it to me because he recommended it to you first. Yep. Um, uh, this one can be found on iTunes, Vudu, Google Play Movies, Vudu Free, and Microsoft Store. Um, and it's pretty much a mockumentary about uh, just uh, these people end up going missing. And it's almost like a Bermuda Triangle case where mm-hmm. they're just trying to figure out what's happening and the more and more that gets revealed about like what's going on like it's just it sucks you in more and more and more it's absolutely one of the more uh fascinating uh mockumentaries i've seen in a couple of years like it just sucked me right in like yeah, and it totally. felt like this could have been like on an unsolved mysteries type thing absolutely good good uh description scotty uh but yeah highly highly recommend yeah. that one um the next one I'm going to talk about is Synchronic, uh, directed by Aaron Moorhead and Justin Benson, uh, the guys that did uh, quite a few other movies. I'm trying to get off the top of my head. I think it was uh, Spring. Uh, uh, damn it. The, the Endless. That was the other one I was thinking of. Nice. There's They did three movies, but I'm, I'm blanking. I always get the name of the other one confused. But uh, yeah, The Endless is one that, that kind of shot them in popularity. This is one that I would say is very borderline horror, but it's... One that I know Brandon Orlick and I both talked about will be adding to our lists as horror because uh, it's very science fiction-y, but it's about this uh, uh, drug that basically uh, creates bizarre and otherworldly effects to the user and like kind of transports them to different realms and just like it's just a very dangerous drug and you have to deal with and it's about this paramedic that are trying to figure out what is going on and it's just a very fascinating just trippy storyline and has to deal with like time travel and all this other stuff and it's just so well done and just very in a very like a, a lightly touched on lovecraftian aspect not like lovecraft horror but just like the other world the idea of things that yeah, lovecraft tends totally. to do uh but highly 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 recommend this movie it's incredible um the other one is unearth which, uh, oh, I, sorry, I got to go with uh, Where Sea Chronic Was Found, Amazon, iTunes, Vudu, Google Play Movies, and Amazon Video. Uh, yeah, the next movie I want to talk about is Unearth, which stars the ever-awesome Adrian Barbeau. And it's about this company that uh, like goes around to the small town and uh, gets permission to start fracking on their land. And, well, as the title says, unearths something. And it ends up being just like this uh, very, uh, like, once again, kind of like a fungus type situation. And yeah, just some messed up stuff happens in this film. And it's very horrific what happens to certain people and just like showing the dangers of fracking and like a very low budget, uh, low budget social commentary way, though. But very, very good movie. Uh, And that one can be found on Amazon, iTunes, Google Play and uh, Vudu. And Woo-hoo. that is that is my recommendations for 2021. Awesome. So you've heard it here. You've heard it the best, unless you like what Tim Davis likes and listen to Horror for Dummies. Boo. Because Boo. guaranteed he'll like all the movies that we don't. Boo. He's a heel. Boo. He is a heel. But you know what? He's probably a face, actually. Oh, I'll, I'll use his face, all right. Because he's always much more kinder. He's like, you know, other people like this and I just didn't get it. And we're like, fuck you, Tim. Right? <laughs> we're going to take you in the ring right now. <laughs> at unforgiven tim you will be unforgiven <laughs> i yeah. i did that in a post to him and i don't think he got it because in wwe they used to do these pay-per-views and like they i forget who it was you think of the worst promos and we would just joke me and my wrestling friends that all they were going to do is just state the name of the pay-per-view in their promo <laughs> so if the pay-per-view is called no way out they'd be like at no way out you will have no way out <laughs> because they just could <laughs> kind of promo if their life depended on it. But anyway, what we're looking forward to, I'll be honest, there's not a lot that's been released yet that I'm overly looking forward to. Um, yes, that includes Scream 5 because I'm not. <laughs> no. Not that I have a problem with it. I will watch it, but I'm not like, oh my God, I can't wait for Scream 5. Like, right. Or Halloween know, ends. 
or or Halloween ends. Neither one of those am I biting at the bit for. It doesn't mean that I don't respect other people that are excited. It's just not my thing. Um, I'm looking forward to They Hear It, which is done by the same director of, as It Follows. Oh, really? And is more based on sound. So I'm excited for that. I think the Black Phone has potential. I hope it's good. Um, it looks pretty good to me. That's going to be dropping earlier in February of this year. Nope. <laughs> Like Jordan nope. Peele. I like Jordan Peele, so I'll probably enjoy this. And I'm interested in they're redoing the Hellraiser. Um, yes, and especially and, with uh, a female uh, actress playing uh, Pinhead. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm interested to see how it goes down, right? I'm interested to see what the adaptation of it's going to be. So Yeah, I am very excited for that one. Like, um, I didn't put it on my list because you had it, but I did put Nope. But I am also excited for Nope and Hellraiser. Nice, nice. Like, I have zero idea what Nope is even about, but... And it's Jordan Peele, and yeah. I don't know. So far, I've liked everything he's done, so... Right, exactly. Right. Uh, and yeah, like, uh, you had, two, like, uh, three of them that I wanted to add to my list. So, yeah, Black Phone, Nope, and Hellraiser. Yeah. Uh, Black Phone, because it is written by uh, Joe Hill, who is uh, Stephen King's son. Yeah. And he's done amazing, amazing yeah. stories. So, I'm Absolutely. very excited to see what this is. Um, and then, obviously, like I said, Nope. Jordan Peele, I'm curious. Hellraiser, I want to, like, it's a remake, so I'm very curious about that, too. And just, like, the casting that they've already decided to do, I'm excited yeah. to see what how she portrays Pinhead and how she looks. I'm ready for this. Well, and that um, was originally female in the book, yes. wasn't it? So yep, everybody... Well, it, was a, it was an androgynous character with a female, female child-like voice, oh, is how it was described. Go. Which definitely wasn't in the first it, one. Yeah, definitely not Doug Bradley. <laughs> yeah. Doug Bradley does not have a child-like voice. So. No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, so, but uh, sequels that I'm excited for, I will bring one up, and that is Evil Dead Rises. Nice. Uh, it is going to be the fourth movie in the Evil Dead franchise, all well, fifth if you count the remake. But uh, it's going to bring back Bruce Campbell as Ash, and it's going to be him dealing with deadites in a high-rise tower style. So I'm, I'm in my head, I'm going, ooh, die hard with deadites? <laughs> count me in. <laughs> Son of a bitch, I'm in. Right? I, I'm, I'm excited. I think Sam Raimi's back for directing. Don't, I could be wrong on that, but if so, like that even has me more excited. So yeah, I'm very curious to see, because that's supposed to come out sometime in 2022. Uh, and then this one is good old Robert Eggers' next film, The Northman. Yeah. Uh, so if no one knows who he is. He's the director of The Witch and The Lighthouse. And this one sounds like right up my alley because it's he returns with an epic historical thriller that focuses on just how far a Viking prince will go to seek vengeance for his murdered father. <laughs> Not a historical movie. No. Is He's he going to get real life. Vikings and have <laughs> yes. them make, make them live on a Viking ship so it can be authentic? Well, he did get a, uh, I mean... It kind of, in a way, this kind of all ties in. He did get uh, Alex Skarsgård, who's going to be in the film, who did play Eric Northman in uh, True Blood. See? Honestly, the title, the Northman. Eric I know you Northman. love him, ah, but you're always ah. like, and him, he made everyone use the same tools con to, to construct things in the witch. And then they use the same camera from the time period that they made the lighthouse. Like, it's your thing. And both Brandon and I roll our eyes. All it's know, the one thing that it. Brandon and I are united on. It's like the one thing that both of us are like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, well, this one, I'm, I'm not sure what he's going to do film wise, but like, I do love. He's going to make whole... everyone live on a Viking ship. That's yes. what he's going to do. And dress in Viking clothing. So well, but you know me, I'm, I'm a historical nerd when it comes to like the Viking. I know you are. And stuff, so I'm like, yes, you I am love this all shit. fucking in. Oh, man, you're like <laughs> balls deep in already. Yes. Fuck like, yes, honestly, you're ready to go. Like, so... Open wide because here I come. <laughs> Oh why <laughs> so for the month of december we've decided to do something a little bit different we're doing three top five lists and we have our international guest and one domestic lined up we will be working with kate and matt from the what is it the eternal spot the eternal darkness of the not so spotless, spotless mind, mind podcast, podcast. Uh, Kate and Matt both have been on various podcasts before. Kate has a lot of experience with um, summer series. Also, Scott talked about her earlier doing the Dark Parade. Matt has been on Controllers Up, Cards Down. And I don't know if Matt's been on the summer series, but I really look forward to working with him. Uh, so we will be having them on to talk about top five movies that we like to watch around horror and horror. Top five horror movies that we like to watch around Christmas and wintertime. 
Then we will have Mr. Lance Langford from the Horror Returns podcast. Fuck, the yes. man, the legend. About time About we get to time. work with him. Like, this is a big name that we're having on. Like, you know, Lance is always listens to our podcast. He always gives feedback. And Lance is so fucking cool. And he is another one that goes to the beat of his own drum when it comes to movies he likes and says, you know what? I don't care what you guys say. This is fucking movies great. I love Lance. Bravo, one of my dude, favorite fucking... reviews he ever did was of uh, The Fanatic and some of the shit <laughs> yes. he said on that review. I thought he was drunk, but I don't, I don't know if he was or not, but that shit is mint. The Horror Returns is on one of the, on the list, ton of the top 50 horror podcasts that are out there right now. If you haven't listened to them, please check them out and join their Patreon and leave them a five-star review on Apple iTunes. There you go, Lance. I covered it all. So Lance will be (laughs) on to talk to us about top five remakes. Oh yeah, yeah. he will be. Perfectly fitting for good old Lance. And we've worked with him before on the Horror Returns, mm-hmm. but this will be the first time we bring him over to the Friday well, Night. Well, we're years. bringing I'm him excited. on solo without Brian and Phil, who bite my fist. I'm sad that they won't be on, but uh, <laughs> that's a compliment, by the way, to them. Right. Um, <laughs> bite my fist means hot. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so is Lance, though. Lance is super hot, too. Like, both Scott and I are going to be recording without pants because yeah, we're just that damn excited. Straight. I'm going to be tweaking my... On. I'll be tweaking my nipples when he's on. <laughs> and then finally, the main mm. event. The time I'm, we've all been waiting for. I so got a Scott Crawford right now. One of our most popular episodes ever before was when we worked with these gentlemen. It is hard as hell to set up something with them. We've had the pleasure yes. of doing two shows with them. And this will be our third. And it is Horror for Dummies. Yeah. Our final final podcast will be with tim davis and daniel what is it loof yep daniel loofy or also known as mushroom Mushroom. (laughs) from the horror for dummies podcast our boyfriends our favorite c words and (laughs) which they use in australia all the time and we are going to be covering top five horror comedies so uh, it is so much fun it is one of those i think lance will be the patreon one because well he's a big deal exactly like I mean, when you have all lance of them are Lanford a big deal on, but but lance let's be real you know lance is a pioneer so we got to give that respect to him we're very excited to work with kate and matt i think we're gonna have a lot of fun with them uh first time we worked with a guy girl podcast yeah um so that will be very fun And yeah, so it's just something a little bit different. We decided to take a break from the topics. We will be going back to the topics that you suggested uh, come the new year, but we also have something else special planned in the new year. And we'll probably announce that on our, because our last podcast will be with Tim and Daniel before the holidays. So we'll either announce it then or on our year-end show. Yeah, well, I was going to say, should we uh, mention who we may have on our year-end show? I don't know if he's going to actually show up. Should we? I think we should leave that. Yeah. Yeah. I have a feeling he'll, I, I, I'm 99% sure he'll be there, but yeah, we'll All see. All right. Well, we can announce it anyway. For our year end show, our plan is to have the one, the only, the stud, Mr. Brandon Garlic from the Exploding Heads movie podcast to come back in the ring again with us to do a year end award show because he just keeps watching 2021s like a motherfucker. So yeah, he is a monster that can't be stopped. <laughs> he is a monster. So basically Scott and I will not be solo. We will be chaperoned this point moving on for the rest of 2021 to exit this year. We are so excited to have these great podcasters come on with us and really great people. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And we hope you guys enjoy listening. We hope you enjoy this little break from the topics uh, and, and listening to some other great podcasters. And hopefully you start listening to their shows too. Uh, they all have a lot to offer. So they absolutely do. And they are all like, they all do something different and it's all, and every one of them, they're fun. Absolutely. So we can't wait. We're so excited, especially to work with the international people. Cause it's tough. It's it time yeah. zones aren't easy to figure out, especially the Aussie people. I'm looking at you, Tim, but if I did it, Tim, I don't know why you can't. Ooh, um, snoop. Right? So, yeah. Getting called out there, Tim. Getting called out. It is hard, though. That is the hardest. Yeah, it's hard, it all right. So We're talking about Tim. I'm, I'm hard, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a raging Scott Crawford right now. I love it. I love it. You know what? Thanos not my boyfriend anymore. I don't want to say, like, we kind of broke up because, like, they all, all they talk about is you. So you know what? That's fine. I know where my bread is buttered and I don't, I don't, I don't need to be rejected. 
So we're just friends. Um, oh, yeah, we're just friends. Poor I kid. hope that hurt to hear, much like it hurt to say. <laughs> oh. <Just> <laughs> but thank you so much as always, as always for listening. Please, if you haven't already, head on over to the Legion Network. Hit that subscribe button on any of the podcasts. Um, I don't pay cost services, podcast services you choose to listen through, whether it's podcast addicts, Spotify, etc. And thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting us. Uh, we so look forward to our next couple of shows in December. And as always, uh, we appreciate your support and listening. Scotty, is there anything else you need to say to the people? Yes, I do. Um, so to everyone out there, have to all our my American friends, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Hope it goes well. Enjoy time with your family. To everyone else out in the world, have fun and be safe during Black Friday. And thank you. Have a nice day. Unpleasant <laughs> dreams. See ya.